Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming. My name is Mike LeBeau, Director of Partnerships at Testify Sec. Appreciate you joining this 101 presentation on securing your supply chain with an open source ecosystem. Now, if you're like me, sifting through compliance and regulatory requirements is about as much fun as watching paint dry. So my attempt with this presentation is to make it a little more entertaining, if nothing else, through some cool AI-generated imagery. Hey, look, it's Sandy the Squirrel. Now, together, we're going to embark on a steampunk safari through this exciting world of regulatory compliance and requirements intended to help secure the supp software supply chain. On our journey, we will explore some of the threats and vulnerabilities at each stage of the supply chain. So please keep your hands and feet inside the vehicle at all times. We'll also look at some of the innovative technologies, open source projects, tools, and frameworks, supply chain superheroes, as I like to call them, that have admirably answered the call and are freely available to help you mitigate risk across your attack surface as you build and ship your code. So, why are we even talking about this? Why are we here? Why should you care? It's pretty obvious, right? We're here because, uh, I mean, we're here with this conference, conference dedicated to open source security and across industries and organizations. They rely on IT infrastructure and applications to manage their operations, uh, bring software and applications to market. Security is a critical consideration for all of these systems and workloads. Um, does anybody here know if you didn't already see my slide earlier, what, um, what is the average cost? What do you think the average cost is of a software supply chain attack? Tom? 10 million. 10 million, it's a good guess. I mean, just to put it in a little more context. So it, the average, or a, a, a data breach attack hit an all time high last year in 2023 at 4.45 million. But a supply chain attack is even more costly because the time it takes to identify and contain. Um, last year, that hit 4.63 million. When it comes to the average time to identify, identify and contain a, a supply chain attack, on average, it's uh, 10 months, 294 days. The share of data breaches from software supply chain attacks in 2023 was 12%. And this is a problem that's not getting smaller. It's a trend that's increasingly growing year over year with a three-year annual average of 742%. So it's no surprise that three out of four CEOs say that protecting their partner ecosystem and supply chain is just as important as building their organization's cyber defenses. On our left, we have Gary the Gecko looking too cool for school on his little log with his goggles. The good news is that you're not expected to undertake this massive effort of securing your applications and workloads alone. In fact, Section 4 of the White House Executive Order on May 12, 2021, on improving the nation's cybersecurity, specifically called out enhancing software supply chain security. I'll quote, the security of software used by the federal government is vital to the federal government's ability to perform its critical functions. The development of commercial software often lacks transparency, sufficient focus on the ability of the software to resist attack, and adequate controls to prevent tampering by malicious actors. There's a pressing need to implement more rigorous and predictable mechanisms for ensuring that products function securely and as intended. The security and integrity of critical software, software that performs functions critical to trust, such as affording or requiring elevated system privileges or direct access to networking and computing resources is a particular concern. Accordingly, the federal government must take action to rapidly improve the security and integrity of the software supply chain with a priority on addressing critical software. So this was massively important because it marked the acknowledgement by the federal government that this is a critical issue and concern for our national security. And we all know the way the government works, so that means that this announcement was probably 20 years overdue. But even before this announcement, work had been being done by organizations such as NIST, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, to create frameworks and guidelines around cybersecurity. However, this executive order called much more attention to the matter and accelerated those efforts. So this is what we're going to get to right now. Some of these recent and up and coming regulatory requirements and frameworks that we should all be aware of. Because if you think about it, typically these regulations are initially adopted by government 
contractors, anyone looking to do business with the federal government, and then they get adopted by highly regulated industries, financial services, healthcare, aerospace, and then eventually become standardized and get adopted industry-wide. The first, um, first one we'll look at is NIST SP Special Publication 853. This provides a comprehensive set of security and privacy controls for federal information systems and organizations. These controls are designed to protect organizational operations and assets, individuals, and other organizations from a diverse range of threats and risks. SP 853 outlines security and privacy requirements and guidelines for implementing effective security programs covering areas such as access control, risk assessment, incident response, and continuous monitoring. It serves as a foundational document for cybersecurity and is widely adopted not only by federal agencies, but also by organizations in different sectors that are looking to bolster their cybersecurity posture and comply with regulatory environments. Next, and what kind of came from 853 was special publication 800 to 18. You may know it as the Secure Software Development Framework. This is a core set of high-level secure software development practices that can be integrated into each SDLC implementation. If you follow these practices, it should help software producers reduce the number of vulnerabilities in release software, the potential impact of the exploitation of undetected or unaddressed vulnerabilities, and address the root causes of vulnerabilities to prevent future occurrences. The SSDF are broken down into four groups. You've got the PO, prepare the organization. Ensure that the organization's people, processes, and technology are prepared to perform secure software development at the organization level, and in some cases for individual development groups or projects. Next is PS, prepare the software. Protect all components of the software from tampering and unauthorized access. Then we have PW, produce well-secured software. Well-secured software with minimal security vulnerabilities in its releases. And RV, respond to vulnerabilities identify residual vulnerabilities in software releases and respond appropriately to address those vulnerabilities and prevent similar ones from occurring in the future. From that, from the Secure Software Development Framework, we have NIST SP800204D, which is about integrating security into software supply chains, a focus on cloud-native application development, and again, yeah, focuses on integrating those uh, software supply chain security measures into CI-CD pipelines. Moving on in our Safari, look on your right, it's NANA, the narwhal. We have an overview of current trends and regulatory requirements with NIST CS CSF Cybersecurity Framework 2.0. This complements 853. The NIST Cybersecurity Framework CSF 2.0 provides guidance to industry, government agencies, and other organizations to manage cybersecurity risks. It, it provides a taxonomy of high-level cybersecurity outcomes that can be used by any organization, regardless of size, sector, or maturity, to better understand, assess, prioritize, and communicate its cybersecurity efforts. 837 is all about risk management, describes the risk management framework, RMF, and provides guidelines for applying the RMF to information systems and organizations. The RMF gives a disciplined, structured, and flexible process for managing security and privacy risk that includes information security categorization, control selection, implementation, and assessment, system and common control authorizations, and continuous monitoring. There's also NIST 830, which is a guide to conducting risk assessments. So 837 is all about risk management, and then 830 is all around conducting risk assessments, providing a structured yet flexible process for managing cybersecurity and privacy risk to information and systems that include, again, system categorization, control selection, implementation, assessment, authorization, and continuous monitoring. And then finally, what we'll touch on today is 800161, which covers CSCRM, which is the Cybersecurity Supply Chain Risk Management. Organizations need assurance of how the technology they acquire is developed, integrated, and deployed, or the processes, procedures, standards, and practices used to ensure the security, resilience, reliability, safety, integrity, and quality of the products and services that they're consuming. 
this publication provides guidance to organizations on identifying, assessing, and mitigating those cybersecurity risks through the supply chain at all levels of their organizations. Look at that. Hubert the humpback whale is breaching. Now that we've established why it's important to secure the supply chain and some of the regulatory requirements and compliance frameworks around doing so, it's probably good to take a step back and just define what we mean exactly by software supply chain. The software supply chain refers to the various stages involved in taking your software from source to, to deploy. What, what are those processes? What are those components involved with building that application? So looking at source in the, first, in the source phase, producers perform development and operations related tasks that add value to their software products. Developers and IT ops staff will write and review sources. Sources can be content that's written or thoroughly reviewed by the producer. It's stored in repos and used to build software products. Common sources include source code written by developers within the producer org, source code that's written by a third party that's thoroughly reviewed by that producer, container images created by the producer's ops teams, build tools and configurations written by producers to define how artifacts are transformed, and then infrastructure as code used to provision build resources. Software ar architects and developers also evaluate and integrate dependencies during the create phase or the source phase. Like sources, dependencies are also used to build software, but they are not written or reviewed by the producer. They can include open source libraries, modules and components, third party commercial middleware, industry standard software development frameworks, publicly available container images. When evaluating dependencies, producers should consider the trustworthiness of the supplier and verify the authenticity of each dependency. And finally, developers, you can use security scanning and testing tools to detect potential vulnerabilities in both sources and dependencies. Common techniques include software composition analysis, SAS, DAST, uh, which is static application security testing, dynamic application security testing, threat modeling, IAST, interactive application security testing, and other security scanning tools. When it comes to the build phase, sources and dependencies are transformed into artifacts using build tools and platforms. Common artifacts include compiled binaries, container images, documentation, SBOMs, software builds of materials, VEX documents, vulnerability exploitability exchange documents, other attestations. Build platform implementation can vary between organization Elements of that can include compilers and related tools for transforming sources and dependencies into artifacts, attestation tools that generate provenance on newly created artifacts, functional test suites, CICD pipelines, and then security uh, scanning tools that can be integrated into those CICD pipelines. Next, we have package, which is the process of packaging and preparing software for distribution to users. So the artifacts created during the build phase are stored in artifact repositories and then published in package registries to make them available for use in the deploy and run phases. This stage involves creating installation packages, managing dependencies, and generating metadata for the software. The total dependency on open source components in modern software made this stage the most frequent software supply chain attack target. Um, huge target for cyber and malicious actors, cyber criminals and malicious actors, which is why over 245,000 malicious packages were found during 2023. Also, it's worth noting these stages, source build and package are all iterative. Software development and IT teams often use these artifacts from the build phase to test and, and debug issues in the source and dependencies. And once the issues are resolved, the build phase then continues again. Okay, now let's look at the stages of the software supply chain in terms of where the associated threats and vulnerabilities exist as outlined by SALSA, the supply chain levels for software artifacts. So we have source threats. Again, modern software development teams and organizations store many types of content, including source code, infrastructure as code, and tool configurations in their repositories. This variety makes source repos attractive targets Adversaries that attack repos can potentially modify not only code, but also infrastructure, CICD pipelines, and build platforms. 
So a source integrity threat is a potential for an adversary to introduce a change to the source code that does not reflect the intent of the software producer. It includes the threat of an author, it could be an authorized individual introducing an unauthorized change, in other words, an insider threat. Unauthorized changes to source and compromised source repositories uh, could include someone attacking sources before they are submitted to official repositories or someone using an IDE or other developer tool to introduce malicious behavior into sources. Uh, if we're going alphabetically through these, so A is submit an unauthorized change, so an adversary introducing a change through, official, through the official source control management interface without any special administrator privileges. B, compromise source repo. An adversary, uh, an adversary introduces a change to the source control repo through an administrative interface or through a compromise of the underlying infrastructure. C, building from a modified source. An adversary builds from a version of the source code that does not match the official source control repo. Uh, within this, there could be several different examples. Build from unofficial fork of the code, building from an unofficial branch or a tag, building from, an unofficial, from unofficial build steps, build from unofficial parameters, building from a modified version of code modified after checkout. Next we have dependency threats, which dependency threat is, it's a vector for an adversary to introduce behavior to an artifact through external software that the artifact requires to function. Using a compromised dependency, for example, the adversary could inject malicious code into software required to build the artifact, or a compromised runtime dependency injecting malicious code into software required to run the artifact. Build threats, so build platforms being typically multi-tenant systems are tightly integrated with art artifact repositories and package registries. They provide self-service capabilities to multiple untrusted users simultaneously. So the variety and complexity of systems integrated into build platforms also makes them a, a very attractive target, target for malicious actors. A build integrity threat would be a potential for an adversary to introduce behavior to an artifact without changing its source code or to build from a source, dependency, or a process that's not intended by the software producer. Um, alphabetically, we have E, compromising a build process. Adversary introduces an unauthorized change to a build output through tampering of the build process or introducing false information into the provenance. F, uploading modified package. Adversary uploads a package not built from the proper build process. G, compromising package registry. An adversary modifies the package on the package registry using an administrative interface or through a compromise of the infrastructure. And then uh, using a compromised package, modifying the package after it has left the package registry or tricks the user into using an unintended package. Okay. Now let's look at some of those open source security tools, frameworks, and projects, AKA superheroes. By each stage of the supply chain, they serve to protect. And by the way, I must say that's a good looking stoic Witty the Owl in a dreamy sunset. So within the secure dev environment, we have, um, we all know Git, right? So Git has a few ways to sign and verify work using GPG. It's been around a long time. SigStore GitSign, part of the SigStore project. GitSign implements keyless SigStore to sign Git commits with a valid OpenID Connect identity. In practice, that means you won't need GPG keys and a complicated setup in order to sign your Git commits. AllStar, part of OpenSSF, AllStar is a GitHub app that continuously monitors GitHub orgs or repositories for adherence to security best practices to give you finely tuned control over the files and settings that affect the security of your projects. You can choose which security policies to monitor at both the organization and repository level and how to handle policy violations. Open Source GitLab provides customizable permissions. When you add a user to a project or a group, you assign them a role that determines which actions they can take. Secure, next, uh, next stage, secure SCM. GitLab also has a robust open source code repository. Uh, GitTough is an op GitTough is an open SSF sandbox project. GitTough provides 
a security layer for Git using some concepts introduced by the update framework, or TUF. Among other features, Git TUF handles key management for all developers on the repository. It allows you to set permissions for repository branches, tags, files. It lets you use new cryptogra cryptographic algorith algorithms, SHA-256, protects against other attacks that Git can be vulnerable to, and, and much more, all while being backwards compatible with GitHub, GitLab, et cetera. In the next stage, secure build CI. And by the way, I'll, I'll say that this is not by any means an exhaustive list, but just some of the uh, exciting innovative technologies to highlight. Um, within Secure Build and CI, so Dagger is a powerful programmable open source CI CD engine that runs your pipelines and containers. Pre-push on your local machine and or post-push in CI. It can encapsulate all your project's tasks and workflows into simple functions written in your programming language of choice. Tekton and Tekton Chains. Tekton's a powerful and flexible open source framework for creating CI CD systems. It allows developers to build, test, and deploy across cloud providers and on-premise systems. Change is the Kubernetes custom resource definition CRD controller that allows you to manage your supply chain security in Tekton. In its default mode of operation, Chains works by observing all task runs, executions in your cluster. When task runs complete, Chains takes a snapshot of them. It then converts the snapshot to one or more standard payload formats signs them, and stores them somewhere. SBOMIT, an open SSF sandbox project as well. SBOM on in toto, or SBOMIT, is a specification that aims to fortify software supply chain security by enhancing the reliability and integrity of software bills of materials, SBOMs. SBOMs often suffer from inaccuracy, primarily due to a retrospective approach to software analysis that fails to accurately track components. This challenge is becoming more pressing with the rise of sophisticated supply chain attacks requiring advanced technology and robust frameworks like the Secure Software Development Framework for comprehensive security. SBOMIT solves a need seen both in commercial and public sector to ensure integrity of SBOMs, and this spec proposes a means to generate metadata for an SBOM while the software is being created, so during, during the build process. Um, it's also uh, worth noting that with this information, uh, the means by which the information is captured is, is through in toto attestations and layouts, which would allow for verifiable SBOMs. And it's not, uh, it's not meant to be a replacement, but instead work alongside existing SBOM formats. Uh, GitLab, as part of its open core, provides a robust CI CD solution to catch bugs early in the development cycle and help ensure that all the code deployed to production complies with your established code standards. Renovate, uh, Renovate provides automated dependency updates, multi-platform and multi-language. Salsa, supply chain levels for software artifacts, is an open SSF project and a spec for describing and incrementally improving supply chain security. It's organized into a series of levels that describe increasing security guarantees. Within security scanning tools, so Bearer is an open source SAST scanner to find and fix security risks and vulnerabilities in your code. Clear is an open source project for the static analysis of vulnerabilities in application containers, currently including OCI and Docker. Trivi is a comprehensive and versatile security scanner. It has scanners that look for security issues and targets where it can find those issues. Trivi can scan container images, file systems, Git repos, virtual machine images, Kubernetes, AWS, to detect um, OS packages and software dependencies in use, SBOMs, CVEs, infrastructure as code issues and misconfigurations, sensitive info and secrets, as well as software licenses. SIFT is a CLI tool and Go library for generating a software bill of materials from container images and file systems. It's exceptional for vulnerability detection when used with a scanner like Gripe, and Gripe is a vulnerability scanner for container images and file systems. SEMGREP OSS is a fast, open source, static analysis tool for searching code, finding bugs, and enforcing code standards at editor, commit, and CI time in 30 plus languages. When it gets to secure publication and distribution, the next stage over, Harbor. Hosted by CNCF, Harbor is an open source, trusted, cloud native registry project that stores, signs, and scans content. 
It extends the open source Docker distribution by adding the functionalities usually required by users such as security, identity, and management. Having a registry close, closer to the build and run environment can improve the image transfer efficiency. Harbor supports replication of images between registries and also offers advanced security features such as user management, access control, and activity auditing. Nexus OSS is a powerful repo manager and central platform for storing build artifacts with easy and intuitive workflows. RS Tough is an open SSF sandbox project, repository service for Tough. RS Tough is a system for securing content downloads from tampering between the repo and the client, for example, by an on-path attacker. And then when it comes to secure deployment, Open Policy Agent, a graduated CNCF project, is an open source general purpose policy engine that enables unified context-aware policy enforcement across the entire stack. Kyverno is a policy engine designed for Kubernetes and and Kubernetes platform engineering teams. It enables security, automation, compliance, and governance using policy as code. It can validate, mutate, generate, and clean up configurations using Kubernetes admission controls, background scans, and source code repository scans. Kyverno policies can be managed as Kubernetes resources and do not require learning a new language. Kyverno is designed to work nicely with tools you already use like kubectl, customize, and git. Down at the bottom, we have our supply chain control plane, supply chain metadata storage. On the left is SigStore Folsio, part of, uh, part of OpenSSF. It's a free-to-use certificate authority for issuing code signing certificates for an OIDC, OpenID Connect, identity, such as email address. Folsio only issues short-lived certificates that are valid for 10 minutes. Vault, we're probably all familiar with, a tool for securely accessing secrets. A secret could be anything that you want to tightly control access to, such as API keys, passwords, certificates, and more. It provides a unified interface to any secret while providing tight access control and recording a detailed audit log. Intoto is a CNCF project. Intoto provides a framework to protect the integrity of the software supply chain. It does so by verifying that each task in the chain is carried out as planned by authorized personnel only and that the product is not tampered with in transit. Intoto requires a project owner to create a layout. A layout lists the sequence of steps of the software supply chain and the functionaries authorized to perform these steps. When a functionary performs a step, Intoto gathers information about the used command and the related files and stores it in a link metadata file. As a consequence, link files provide the required evidence to establish a continuous chain that can be validated against the steps defined in the layout. The layout signed by the project owners together with the links signed by the designated functionaries are released as part of the final product and can be validated manually or via automated tooling, for example, in a package manager. Witness is a pluggable framework for software supply chain risk management. It automates, normalizes, and verifies software artifact provenance. It is also a sub-project of Intoto and part of the CNCF. Witness is a dynamic CLI tool that integrates into pipelines and infrastructure to create an audit trail for your software's entire journey through the software development lifecycle using the Intoto specification. It also features its own policy engine with embedded support for OPA Rego, so you can ensure that your software was handled safely from source to deployment. Archivista is a graph and storage service for Intoto attestations. It enables the discovery and retrieval of attestations for software artifacts. You can store and retrieve in total attestations, query for relationships between attestations via GraphQL API, validate witness policy through the, without the need to manually list expected attestations. Next is uh, SigStore Cosign. Enables keyless signing with the SigStore Public Good Full Seal Certificate Authority and Record Transparency Log. Hardware and KMS signing. Signing with the Cosign generated encrypted private public key pair container signing, verification and storage in an OCI registry. And then ReCore. ReCore's goals are to provide an immutable tamper-resistant ledger of metadata generated within a software project supply chain. It can enable software maintainers and build systems to record signed metadata to an immutable record. And in conclusion, uh, that was a lot, I know. it was. A lot, uh, a lot to say. 
Just as a quick recap of what we covered, we talked about the current trends, regulatory and compliance requirements, and controls being designed to help organizations and producers deliver more secure software. We touched on the different stages of the supply, software supply chain from source, build, package that act in a continuous loop with dependencies, vulnerabilities and threats that exist at each stage of the supply chain, and open source tools for securing your supply chain at each stage. At this point, I will open it up uh, if there's any Q&A. Thank you for your time. So this specifically, uh, the question was managing the components, the granularity of the components in the For that specifically, I, I feel like um, cataloging and having the ability to uh, sign and verify all of your all of your components. But um, if if anyone, Tan or anyone else in the audience has thoughts, um, please feel free to share.
Great question. All right. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you all. Appreciate it.